You know those friends that you always, friends, those people in your life that you are apprehensive to be around because of how they make you feel? Like they have this bad attitude or some negative perspective or just, you know, something to make you feel bad about yourself or a complaint or it's, you know, criticism, right? Have you ever felt that way suddenly being alone? You wonder where it comes from, right? It comes from the Nephilim. Come from the invisible human hybrids that are left over from the floods, low-level demons that we trample. Now, the way you... They know when you see them, right? And obviously, it's not with these, right? But you perceive them based on the influence, right? It's that... It's that insight you know anytime you, you're just think of influence itself could be from any source just influence itself once you recognize once you know how to perceive influence and you can do this as a test you could turn on the television you could go to a place you could go be around people you could uh, listen to music music is a good indicator because there's an energy to music Listen to different types of music, but listen to it to, to, for the express intention of recognizing influence, training yourself to perceive influence, okay? Now, it's important to know that in order to get rid of them, you have to, you have to focus on light. This is very important. You focus on light. You focus on the, the nature of God inside you, right? Because he comes, God comes to into your life from the inside. Okay, from the inside. He doesn't come from the outside. He comes from the inside. Okay, this is very important. Now, the body of Christ can serve each other horizontally. Okay, and we can, we can release God if we know how to, you know, faithful or the wounds of a friend, if, we, if we're willing to be truthful uh, and become a target. Um, and then the other half, of course, is just to be humble. But... Uh, humble and admit that you know we need insight in order to do things right and we, we humble ourselves under the authority uh, the power of authority that God puts on us you know um, one of my pastors um, I noticed that he he gets up and he'll talk for for however, however long and then as soon as he's down, he'll want to talk because he was being obedient with the message. Okay. He's being obedient with what God has to say while he's giving a message, uh, speaking. But when he's, when he, <laughs> when he steps down to the, to the normal level of ground, he's him. He's just who he is. He wants to share because he's he's got so much processing through him. He needs to rest. He needs to be caught emotionally, right? So there's the authoritative sort of covering. There's the also the uh, the power to catch emotions. Um, but then there's the the horizontal back and forth need just you know sort of fraternal brotherhood that we all need uh, camaraderie okay now consider this consider someone who's familiar with the light now i'm not talking about this pastor but think about think of a, a pastor anybody someone who's who's serving god who is deep into the things of god now what happens when they now imagine all of a sudden that person does not have access. They're so used to the light. They're so used to the results, rather. They're used, so used to seeing themselves a certain... They want to see themselves a certain way. They want to feel certain things. They want to believe that they can have an influence. Okay? That's the motive. Okay? Influence. It's the motive. <laughs> okay? Now, what I've now secret is if you're being tormented, worship God. Because once you have your mind on the light, 
it comes out because whatever you give attention to grows. How does it grow? Well, it grows in terms of what you're surrounded by because you think on it a long time. Whatever you dwell on becomes your reality. I mean, there's that, that I think a, yeah, it was Star Wars. Your, your focus determines your reality. I think it was actually episode one. And that's, that's true. It's a psychological truth. You know, I want to say this to the body of Christ. If you can get a religious, the religious perspective out of your filth, I'm not sure why I would say it this way. Filter talk. Okay. Don't get, you need to remove that, that, I don't know if it's a filter or if it's a blockage. Oh, I have to say it this way. Oh, I have to say it this way. Oh, I have to say it this way. Oh, I have to give scripture. Well, you have a point. Okay. And you have examples. You with me? I'm talking about, what is a point? A point is a sharp thing that creates change. Right? It's divisive. It has to cut. It has to create the opportunity for disagreement. That's the whole point. It has to create opportunity for disagreement. Okay? Worshiping God... You have that that water cycle flow, um, water cycle type flow. So I was listening to, gosh, I don't know where the name of the band was. Um, the King of Love. Came out in the late nineties, mid to late nineties. I looked for it for twenty over twenty years. I couldn't, I couldn't find it. Of course, it was very sporadic that I looked, but. That and then uh, Michelle Toomes, T-U-M-E-S. Very, just very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. So, you know, just worshiping God. You remember, okay, look, look, listen, listen, listen. Any opposition to your feelings get alone Isolate yourself. It's the greatest way to find out where the influences are coming from because you have to pay attention to how you feel, what you think, and what you and what your will is. Are you weak willed? Right now, this is exposure. We're looking for disagreement. You need to create disagreement within yourself. And the way to do that is to oppose your perceptions, to oppose your own feelings, to oppose how you see yourself. Okay, this goes back to blood, sweat, and tears. How you see yourself is based on a connection. What you feel is based on what's there with you. And what your will is based on belief. Where does belief come from? Belief comes from awareness of options. Oh, I can do this. Can I do this? And then you compare, right? And so I'm reminded in James when it says, um, when he talks about the going away and immediately forgetting what you look like. Well, if we're not with, God is... He's so unique. He's not just automatically everywhere. His, his manifest presence is, is not just automatically everywhere. He's a gentleman. You have to actually want him for him to show up. He's not like Kramer and Seinfeld where just flies in. Of course, we need to be sometimes because we need to be invasive and you know, we already have, you got to think of yourself as you already have a relationship with God, right? I'm talking to believers. I'm not talking to unbelievers. You already have a relationship with God. Okay. But 
but you are the body. The Holy Spirit is not the body. Okay. The Holy Spirit is not the body of Christ. Okay. This is important. Now, the fullness of God is in Christ. And Christ is the head of the body. Right? He's the one that determines the direction of the intention. If you are following, if you're following him, you will be beyond fear. All your perceptions will be God's. You'll be surrounded and, per and permeated by the loving presence of God. You'll be permeated by the loving presence of God. And there's no way you can say no to that once it's there. You can't say no to that. But think about it. Do you say no to God? Think about think about this. This is just this is an extra this is a thought exercise. I'm gonna say that no one ever really says no to God. But they're saying no to where they but they're saying yes to something else. Now, do people t tell God, oh, yeah, of course. But you must see it through the eyes of mercy, even though it's not a fact. Is it the truth that you say no to God? No, it's not the truth. It's the deceit that you say no to God. Think about this. And again, this is a thought exercise. We're going to call this a thought exercise. <laughs> I gave away the tricks, my tricks, tricks. I gave away my uh, avenues of access, right? Oh, you can't do that. You can't do it that way. No, 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 no. Laws are there for the protection of others, right? Laws in your life are to protect the people in your life from what they would experience because of a lack of maturity or, or wisdom or sobriety, circumspect or fullness or, or vigilance okay this thing's all wa wacky sorry rules are there for your growth laws are there for the protected others you know if someone's not following a law um, in your life well then you're prone to mistreatment okay that's where limiting others comes in. You have to limit them. Right? And you can just say, I have to limit you. This is just not good. If you want to give me a make me aware of a rule I should know about, well, that's one thing. That will help me. But to try to control me because you want to power trip? If that's who you think you are, then you're not checking your influence. Another, I mean, you could just be directed your questions. I have done this. What's your influence? Oh, uh, people don't know what to say. People have no idea what to say. Oh, uh, they default to, to arrogance. They default to mistreatment. They default to, to deception. What's that? That doesn't really get them anywhere. But they don't care. They want to, they want to think what they want to think. They want to, they want to. They want to. Uh, they just want to believe what they want to want to want to believe, and so belief is a is a is an ego thing. It's an it's a will thing. It's a. Uh, it's in regards to self image. Well, think about it. Oh, people get prideful. They get arrogant. What is arrogant? Arrogance is a, an inflated will. Right. It's it's misshapen will. It goes beyond the boundaries of how it, how far it should go, and that's why we're talking about limits. Right. So there there's nephilim. Who are partial animals yeah animal dna okay they're almost human they still have a presence they still have the ability to project they still have attention they have energy where they get their energy who knows <sighs> okay that should be taken um so we have nephilim we go watch the Kevin Zadai exposing the Nephilim video. Highly recommend it. Okay, so there's the Nephilim. Then there's people. Okay? 
Now, if you get the Nephilim to go away, if you make some, if you give God some space, they'll back off. They don't want to, they don't want to stay in the presence of God. Okay. They might want it, but they, but they don't want the light. They want to feel the presence of God, but they don't want the light. And so I believe this is how the Corinthians um, ended up like, you can feel the presence of God and be carnal to a point, to a point. Now I'm not saying you should. I'm saying that's the that if you're experiencing that, it means you're sliding, you're backsliding. Okay, I believe the Corinthian church. The reason why they ended up being, you know, just they were just so messed up is because they didn't. It wasn't about light. Okay, it was about doing things their way. Oh, look, I have power. Oh, I'm aware of the Nephilim. Oh, now I'm aware of angels, and I'm aware of God, and aware of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, and, 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 and I'm a spirit and look at all what I can do. Woo. And I'm just, you know, uh, you know, kind of, you know, a little wild right now. There's nothing wrong with, with, okay. I'm not here to judge specific things. There's a good form of everything. Okay. There's a good form. But that's part of what can be twisted is, oh, this shouldn't be done. That shouldn't be done. What? You know, I'm reminded of Colossians where it says, we talk, it talks about going, you know, I'm just sort of paraphrasing here, but it talks about being, I'm going to butcher this probably. It talks about going overboard with, with rules and with laws and going beyond the point where you need to, to, to be concerned with specific things. I mean, why, what's, what's the concern? If someone's trying to make you worried about what you're doing or who you are and, you know, make you afraid of your own feelings. I mean, feelings are just are there to find natures. Militarily speaking, they're there to detect. To find out who stands where. You, you don't need people to answer your questions about where they stand says, Oh, what's your, what do you believe? Or where do you, where do you stand politically? Or, or what would you do in this situation? Or do you agree with this? Right. I, I never answer those questions. Right. I never do. Why? Cause I want to rip the root of their bad influence out or I want to, I want to um, praise them in so much as the grace is allowing in terms of encouragement, I should say encourage uh, in regards to what they're doing. Right. What's right? Now, that's not supposed to go to the ego. That's supposed to make go to the feelings and say, this is good. Your blood, sweat, and tears are why you're doing blood or sweat, blood and or sweat and or tears, or why you're having good uh, results. And so...